I describe an urge like being a wave, right? So an urge will come, it will reach some sort of peak and eventually it will die down. No one's ever had the experience of having an urge that has lasted indefinitely forever. Same with emotions, unpleasant emotions, they come, they reach some sort of peak and then they'll eventually sort of pass and, and die down. So when we talk about skills and how to manage an urge, really what we're trying to do is ride that wave to get through the other side. everyone, I'm Dr. Anastasia. And I'm Nick. We're the hosts of the Let's Talk Gambling podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about gambling urges. Hmm. What are urges? What do we do about them? And how can you get through if you're having an urge to gamble? Big questions. Big question. So, I'm going to start off just saying a little bit about what urges are. A lot of people come into therapy sessions and they talk about having had this experience, a really strong impulse um, emotional kind of overwhelm mm. that makes them want to gamble. And that's what we kind of refer to as the urge to gamble. Really common when people are going through a period of trying to cut back on their gambling. So if someone is wanting to think about changing their relationship with gambling, I always tell them to be prepared that they most likely will have these urges to gamble. Mm. Yeah. I know for me, when it came to urges, like it'd be a certain environment or a certain time of the year, like big AFL fan, big sport guy and the Brownlow medal, which was the the best player of the season award. I know that whenever that event was coming up, it would be on my mind so much. I'd be thinking about it. Like before going to bed, I'd be like, oh, I've got this great idea. Or in the middle of the night, I'd wake up or early morning, I'd wake up with my mind buzzed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting you talk about sleep, right? Because- urges, when, when people come and they talk about urges, I hear a lot of people talking about gambling dreams and this mm. can be quite linked to urges as well. So um, whether someone's in a period of gambling or whether they're going through that phase of wanting to cut down their gambling, people might experience gambling related dreams. And I'm always really clear to say to people, this doesn't mean that you want to gamble, right? The brain processes all sorts of things while we're asleep, particularly emotional related stuff. And for a lot of people, there is that emotional tie to gambling. So just because you've had a gambling related dream doesn't mean you actually want to gamble if you're trying to go through that period of changing your relationship with it. But it can mean that we wake up with that sense of wanting to then like go because we're experiencing that urge. Something's been triggered, right? Um, so whether we're talking about urges in our day-to-day -day life, whether that's because we've had a dream about gambling, thinking about urges and how to manage them is really important. And you made a really good point. Mm -hmm. the, the urges can come from things in our environment, right? You mentioned sport. You mentioned um, sort of waking up with maybe that buzz to gamble. There's a lot of triggers that we can speak to. Yeah. And, and for me, the biggest trigger was, I know for a lot of people, it's like if they're drinking or they're at the TAB or they're with their friends and it was like in a social setting, I was the complete opposite of that. It would be when I was at home, had access to my phone or ideally my laptop, bored, didn't really have much to do. And I'd just be like, oh, well, I'm going to watch some sport or I'll do some research or I'll think of ideas or I'll put some bets on. So I was kind of different to some people in that space. Yes. Mm. And and those urges can kind of fit into two categories, right? Or the triggers, sorry, can fit into two categories. So yeah. we can have the external triggers, so stuff that's happening in our environment. We see an ad for, for sports or sports betting, for example. Mm. Or it can be an internal experience, which is often related to how we're feeling. So I'm feeling bored or I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling stressed. They're really common ones. I also want to say that for some people – positive feelings and experiences can also trigger that urge to gamble. So it can be that someone's just got a promotion at work or something exciting has just happened in their life and they want to go and celebrate mm. by gambling. So the triggers are going to be different for everyone, but it's important to think about what are those external triggers, things that are happening in my life, in my environment outside of me, and then what are those internal emotional triggers as well? Cool. Yeah. So- I was just thinking when you were saying that actually there's a quote I've heard, like it's not our experiences that define us, but how we react to them. So like maybe we can't control or maybe I can't control like an urge or a trigger coming up, but what can I do when it comes up? Yeah, absolutely. We can't 
stop those initial automatic emotions or urges. You're yeah. absolutely right. But we can change how we respond. So just because I'm having the urge to gamble doesn't mean I need to go and do it. There's a lot of different sort of ways in which we can manage that urge. And something simple in and of itself that's sometimes helpful for people to remember, I describe an urge like being a wave, right? So an urge will come, it will reach some sort of peak, and eventually it will die down. No one's ever had the experience of having an urge that has lasted indefinitely forever. Same with emotions. Unpleasant emotions, they come, they reach some sort of peak, and then they'll eventually sort of pass and and die down. So when we talk about skills and how to manage an urge, really what we're trying to do is ride that wave to get through the other side. And that's when we don't need that skill anymore and we can kind of keep going in our everyday life. Yeah, cool. Uh, I was also thinking about it, like if the shoe's on the other foot, like we've spoken about like a trigger or an urge, potentially a negative experience or something that might lead a person or maybe lead me to gambling. What if we flip that? Like what are some like positive habits we can build or some things that we can do to counter that? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if someone's experiencing an urge or even if they're not, but they want to build those positive habits into their life, right? There are so many things. So if I just give a couple of examples and ideas, one of them might be something like mindfulness. You know, what does mindfulness look like and feel like for me? How do I engage in that? And that can be super helpful for riding that wave of emotion, Mm. that urge. It's going to feel unpleasant and an urge, sorry, is not a comfortable feeling. It's actually really uncomfortable, but something like mindfulness helps us ride that wave without sort of making that feeling even worse. It might be that for a short period of time, we engage in some sort of distraction. You know, distraction isn't by any means a long-term solution, but we're, when we're at the crux of it and we're really struggling and having that strong urge, distraction can be really useful for, to help us just get through that, you know, 20 minutes, half hour, hour, however long that urge lasts for until we can re-engage with what we need to do. And engaging in things that are really quite pleasant and soothing in our life, you know, whether that be like having a warm bath or a warm shower or, you know, going out for a walk in amongst nature, listening to music that you find really kind of relaxing or music that's sort of like really stimulating to sort of Mm. get that adrenaline going and and sort of have that uh, somewhat of an emotional release with the music. So there's a lot of different ways that we can kind of ride that that wave of that urge. Mm. Yeah, the music example is cool because I think think about it on both ways. Sometimes I'll be feeling an emotion... And I'll be like, cool, I want to listen to this music to take me to a different place. Or I'll listen to music and it will change my emotional state. So it kind of goes both ways. Yeah. So I'm, what I'm thinking is um, there's actually a book I read by this guy, James Clear. It's called Atomic Habits, very well known. And it's really a great way just to like habit stack. So it's like when I do X, I also do Y and Z. So it could be as simple as like, cool, feel an urge to gamble. I'm going to do something ridiculous. I'm just going to do like five star jumps just to like shake that energy out of the body. Like, yes. would you, yes. would you advocate for that? Totally. Like you maybe pair not it the with star something. jumps, but uh, you know, <laughs> maybe the star jumps, but like <laughs> you pair it with something. So yeah. I know automatically when I get that urge, I don't need to think too hard about what I'm going to do. Maybe mm. I have like one, two, three go-to strategies. Something like star jumps is a really good one because you don't have to think too hard about it, right? You just do. And, and when our brain and our body kind of go into that heightened state that might come with an urge, it can be really hard to think clearly. Mm-hmm. So that's why more sensory stuff can be useful. The exercise, the star jumps, the music, the going for a walk. It doesn't require a heap of kind of cognitive mental capacity for me to be able to like work my way through the problem. It just requires me to do something that's going to help me ride that wave. So mm-hmm. they're not long-term strategies. It's not what we want to be doing every day, forever, but it's just in those moments, how do I get through? Mm, yeah, it's like a hard wire reset. Like I know for me, what really helps is like breath work and deep breaths, like box breathing, mm-hmm. breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four, and do that four times. Now, should I put that in practice more often? Yes. <laughs> when I do it, is it effective? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it's just different strokes for different folks. Yeah. And that's all of us. Like it's it's can be hard to implement it consistently, but the more we do it, Hopefully, the easier it becomes. Mm, Nice one. Anything else you want to add? I think that's it. Beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks. All right. So a bit of a recap today. We've spoken about urges. What are they and how they relate to gambling? 
what your triggers might be and how to start to identify internal and external triggers and what you can do if you have been triggered and you are experiencing that urge to gamble. And of course, if you want to learn more, you can always just go to the Gambler's Help website and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Thanks very much.